These are muscles that will help us with facial expression. And these are embedded in the superficial fascia of the face. They originate from the bones of the skull and insert into the skin. And they serve as sphincters or dilators of facial openings and move over lying skin to modify the expression of the face. These are gonna develop from the mesoderm of the second pharyngeal arch of the embryo and they are going to be supplied by the facial nerve. The first one is the orbicularis oculi, which is this one right here. It's a sphincter muscle of the eyelids. It has two parts, a palpebral and an orbital part. The palpebral part approximates the eyelids in blinking and sleep. And the orbital part, which is peripherally located, brings the eyelids together more forcibly to protect from the intense light or foreign bodies. We also have the corrugator supercilii. This one lies deep into the supramedial part of the orbicularis oculi. And this one draws your eyebrows medially. And it produces vertical wrinkles in a supranasal part of the forehead. In the nose, we have the procerus, which produces transverse wrinkles over the bridge of the nose. We also have the nasalis, which dilates the nasal aperture, like the flares, the nares, or nostrils. And so we have this transverse portion, and this nasalis, the alar portion. And we also have the depressor septi nasi, which is right here. And this one assists the nasalis in flaring the nostrils. In the mouth, we also have the orbicularis oris, which the fibers encircle this oral orifice uh, on, the, on the surface of the lips. Most fibers are derived from the boxinator and other muscles around the mouth. And it works as a sphincter uh, around the muscles of the lips and it compresses the lips together and protrudes them. We also have the levator labi superioris and the levator anguli oris. We also have the zygomaticus minor, which elevates the upper lip, the zygomaticus major, which draws the angle of the mouth upward and backward whenever you're smiling. We also have the risorius, which retracts the angle of the mouth. We have the depressor anguli oris and the depressor labi inferioris, as well as the mentalis, which draws up and puckers the skin of the chin. Lastly, in the muscles, we got the occipital frontalis, also known as epicranius. And it consists of four bellies. It has two frontal and two occipital connected by a broad intermediate fibrous sheet, also known as the epicranial aponeurosis. The occipital bellies, which are here posteriorly, originate from the occipital bone above the superior nuchal lines and terminates in the epicranial aponeurosis. Meanwhile, the frontal bellies originate from the epicranial aponeurosis and terminate in the skin of the forehead above the eyebrows. This one draws the scalp back. For example, the frontal bellies will raise your eyebrows, as in whenever you're surprised, and it produces the transverse wrinkles in the forehead. We also have auricular muscles, an anterior, superior, and posterior. Here you can see the anterior, superior, and the posterior. And these ones provide little movement in humans. As for the facial nerve or cranial nerve number seven, this nerve is the one that innervates the muscles of your face for muscle contraction typically. So this one leaves the cranial cavity via the internal acoustic meatus at the lateral end of the meatus and it enters the facial canal and then it exits the temporal bone via the stylomastoid foramen. 
then it enters the parotid gland, as you can see on this picture right here, and passes forward within it. And then it divides into the terminal branches within the parotid gland. So that what you're looking at here, it's the different branches that it has divided into. So there's going to be two groups of branches. There's an intrapetrosal and an extrapetrosal. But the extrapetrosal branches are the ones that are concerned with the innervation of the muscles of the facial expression. There's also uh, another nerve here known as the posterior auricular nerve, which supplies the occipital belly of the occipital frontalis and auricular muscles. The terminal branches of the facial nerve includes the temporal branches, which supply the auricular muscles, the frontal belly of the occipital frontalis, the orbicularis oculi, and the corrugator supercilii. The zygomatic branches supply the orbicularis oculi and the zygomaticus major and minor. The buccal branches supply the boxinator and the muscles of the upper lip and nose. The marginal mandibular branch supplies the muscles of the lower lip and chin. And the cervical branch supplies the platysma. Mm -hmm.